at an early age as a professor in philology. But he turned to philosophy afterward. Due to his lifelong illness of migraine, he had to quit his job as a philosopher very soon already. And severe headaches made it impossible for him at times to even read. The time in which Nietzsche lived was a time in which Christianity was losing its followers. People still believed in things that were attached to Christianity, such as its belief in moral values, in truth, and the goodness of truth. Now Nietzsche famously said that God was dead. But he also said that the shadow of God would remain there for a long time. Nietzsche was a critic of Christianity. He thought that Christianity made Western culture <laughs> decadent. He saw himself as a doctor of culture. On the one hand, Christianity poses an afterlife which makes this life secondary. It is, in a certain sense, life negating. On the other hand, Christianity believes in such, truth, such things as truth and morality, and these notions, they limit our lives on earth. So what Nietzsche does is he cr attacks these remnants of Christianity. One way in which he does this is by psychologizing. He has called himself a psychologist. And he so-called truths are actually collective lies and they have an origin. For example, the notion of evil has an origin in the resentment of the weak. In nature, you have a few strong ones and they have the power and a lot of others who don't. But in order to get into power, the weak ones thought up a list. They said, you strong ones, you are evil. And we, the kind, the gentle, the meek, we are the good. And they were believed. And their morality prevailed. And now it seems as if the Christian morality is the only morality that is possible. But Nietzsche thinks that we must move beyond these notions of good and evil. We must move beyond them in order to live more freely and more greatly. Nietzsche famously said that we have to re-evaluate all values. Instead of preferring the values of equality, humbleness, pity. We have to prefer the values of greatness, of excellence. We have to prefer the few above the many, danger above equality, above safety. So you can see that Nietzsche's philosophy is a philosophy of vitality. Nietzsche's philosophy has a strong negative side. He destroys everything that we hold for holy. But it also has a strong positive side. He also tries to
come up with an answer of what to make of life after the death of God. Because the death of God is terrifying. Because if death, God is dead, then there is no objective orientation point anymore. We have to create our own values. And there is no justification anymore of life and of suffering. So in this void, what is left to do? So, on, on, so we have heard that his answer is to affirm the life forces within us, to live as greatly as possible. But uh, another aspect of his positive ideas is that we should affirm life despite everything, despite suffering. We have to even affirm suffering itself. And this is also another way in which his philosophy is a philosophy of vitality. He came up with the idea of the eternal return. Imagine one day that a demon comes to you. And he says, everything that you are now experiencing, and everything that you have experienced until now, you will actually experience it one time more, and infinitely times more. So your life will repeat itself again and again, everything. Would you not curse the demon for saying such a terrible thing? How would you respond? And this is a test to see if you truly affirm your life. So, we have to stay true to the, to the earth, face reality as it is, and still live, and still affirm life. So this is why his philosophy is a philosophy of heroism and of greatness. Nietzsche's texts um, try to transform the reader. He tries to form new ways of thinking and hopefully to even form a new culture, to stimulate a new culture. His philosophy is a philosophy of the future. So this was, in a glance, Nietzsche the philosopher.